Hey, what's up, guys? This is Shaker Views, and what's Car Talk Monday? And there we go. Some things to talk about. And sorry if I'm, this is going to be a little late. I forgot I was doing a video today. I got a little cut up in this game I've been playing. Yes, I know I, I need to be doing work and so things, but I've been bored. I get nothing to do, so I've been playing this game recently. Club Persona 5. You haven't even heard of it. I recommend looking it up and giving it a try. Especially with this quarantine going around. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's right now on sale for 20 bucks. Not sure now it's not on sale. It's, you can buy it for 20, 20 bucks on PlayStation. It's only on PlayStation 4. So if you have a PlayStation 4, I thought I highly recommend giving it a go. It's a really fun game to play. And it has... It's one of those games It's meant to be played a long... It's a, it takes a long time to play. Like heavy, like over 100 hours of gameplay. Just in the story. So it's a really good game for that. And that's what I'm doing. Alright, let's move. Let's get back to cars. So, big thing. Chevy is now giving a 10-speed automatic transmission to the SS1 LE for the 2021 Camaro. I think that's stupid. Because the whole point of the 1 LE is it's a, it has a manual transmission. You don't get the 1 LE unless you want to have fun and... And Chef, I, ge I guess a lot of people wanted it. I know my buddy, Zuo LS, who has a twenty an 18. When you haven't seen my review of his car, be sure be sure to check out the channel to ch check it out. It was really fun. And that car is made for manual transmission. You don't put an automatic in a high-performance track edition car. I get it if it's faster, but this ain't faster. That automatic's not faster. It's just if you're just lazy. And to me... When you drive a muscle car like a Camaro, you're not really wanting to be lazy. You want to have some fun. And in my in my experience, other people say differently. Driving a driving a muscle car with a with a stick is way more fun than automatic. If it's fa if it's a way 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 faster than than the manual, uh, then I'm alright with an automatic. But the uh, the Triptonic automatic transmission, the ten speed, the the Chevy uses, it's not fast. It has a good, it has, it's good for what it is, but it's not a dual clutch. It's not quick shifting at all. It's just a regular transmission. Yes, it's going on gas and everything, but it's just no. I understand for for ten speed for for the regular Camaro and V8s because I know some grandparents like they're like, oh, you know, Shiny, I, I remember when I had a '68 Camaro. Oh, those were the days. Those were the days. But I can't drive them, man. I can't drive stick no more. It's too for too hard for me to reach my legs. I was just getting automatic. Get the convertible so me me and you can go out and find the sun. Oh, that'll be fun, that'll be fun. Sorry if I cringe you guys a little bit there. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, that's probably why, but this putting an automatic in a high and the the track now I want I wanna say the more track edition the enthusiast version of the SS, it's a little stupid, because now you can, then you're going to have cream, like, yeah, you, you know what you do, let's get, let's make it look good, so we, so we don't get tickets, do we put, like, but you know how fast you were going on, I don't know how, I, I, I shouldn't have been going on the speed limit, you were going 10 miles under the speed limit, oh boy, I'm going to give you right to a, a slow ticket, which is way more than the speed, it's like, oh no, I should have gone to speed limit, oh no. See, I just, it's just, it's just saying. But I get it, you want to sell to the old people and people who don't want, who want a fat, good looking Camaro that, that doesn't, that doesn't want to shift. That, that makes sense, but for the enthusiast version, like me, or my, uh, my, my buddy, my buddy SS, or, or I'm not sure what you want to call yourself, Zoo Outlaw SS, I'm, I'm just going to call Mr. SS for now. For for him. And they want they want a manual transmission for the yes now Chevy's not quitting their manual transmission don't don't give me hate in the comments on there I'm just saying they shouldn't be adding an automatic it's just that's the whole point of one only the Z01 one only I I I understand why I put an automatic because you have you have these YouTubers like me who well guess not. Who make lots of money? Now I don't make I don't make any money on this yet, but there are people who do make a lot of money, and a lot of them are about my age, and they don't really know how to drive sick well. So when they buy something that's high performance, they want you know a matter because so they because they don't know how to shift. 
Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, it's the day and age. But, and SS 108 is not targeting those kids. Especially in automatic. And those kids who can afford, there are some kids who can, with, with, with money, either with parents, rich parents, buy whatever they want, or they earn it themselves and buy it themselves. They're not going to want an automatic they want the manual. They want to have some fun. I mean, the Camaro is an enthusiast car. Especially the 108, that's an enthusiast car. The way they designed it, the, all the transmission, they made it to what the Camaro is known for and what, what we all enthusiasts love about the Camaro. So, that's just my take on that. Next up, Nissan. Nissan is... Now you're thinking, oh, they're going to come up with the new, you're going to talk about the new GTR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, fanboys, no. This saying about the GTR, it's not, well, we're, I'm not sure when they're going to release that. Because of the whole COVID-19 and a bunch of other stuff, we can't, we, well, probably won't be anytime soon. So, well, hopefully they're working on it. They need to redesign at least the Z. I understand not the GTR, but at least redesign the Z. I mean, if I want a Z right now, I will buy a used one. For like 10 grand. You can usually get them. Or in fact, I can just get a, I can get a G35 or G37 for the same, for about the same price. And if you're really going to charge like 40 to 50 grand for a Nissan, I'd rather buy an Infiniti. The Infiniti Q60 looks way better. Now, I do love the look of the 370Z. Don't, don't get me on here, fam, Z, same fanboys. But I, in terms of the new modern look, the Q60 looks better. It has all the memory. It's better to get. It looks better. It'll get a lot of all the cool technology. It's just, it just makes sense. All right, aside for that, let's talk. Let's talk about what they're coming out with. The Nissan Rogue is getting a new redesign. For tw I think 2021. I think it's what Martin Twain said. It looks nice. Uh, it's the same design language they've been they've been going and doing with everything they do now. I don't know why. Nissan recently and a couple other brands. They've been trying to make everything look ultra aggressive when it doesn't need to be. And yes, it looks good, but why? People who buy this kind of a car don't care what it looks like. All they care about is it reliable? Can it give me is it a good gas mileage? Can they fit my crap? Can they fit my kids? That's all they care about. You don't have to make it you don't have to worry about how crazy looking it looks. You don't have to do that. Just make it don't make it ugly. You just make it somewhat Decent and boom, you're done. One of my favorite Nissans is an, I want to say from 95, 96 to 03 ish Pathfinder. I love that car. My dad had one. It was, it was one of the most, not to say best looking, but it was also the best reliable Nissan. We, it just, it, it's what we Nissan was good for, and I always loved that car. I was, I was real. A little upset when he got rid of it. He traded in for I forget what, but I just wish that they would make the make cars that they used to. Hopefully now when they get new management, if you haven't seen the CEO scandal, look it up. It's it's hilarious what what happened. When they get new management, hopefully they fix this issue and make some cars like they used to, make them reliable. Cause I I'm alright with not have uh, having a pretty good looking car. That's not that's not too crazy or anything. That's more, but that's more that's been real designed to be reliable. And that's what you should do. Don't put new technology that doesn't work. Like for, let's give, let's give the lead for example. That is not too overly designed. It looks pretty good, pretty sharp, but not but that, not too crazy. But what I like about what you what Nissan did was they really focused more on the technology and making that battery work. Cause that it's. An incredible little city car. It's a that's it's what I highly recommend. It's one of my best recommended city cars you can buy. Now it's a little expensive, which I do recommend Nissan to lower the price a little bit just so more people be interested in it. Like I said before, but still, it's a great car, and I highly recommend it. Nissan, if you really are looking for ideas, look for the Leaf. That car is great. Whatever you did with that, do it with other other cars. Don't focus on the way it looks. Focus more on the technology. And making the car reliable and have good parts and everything and make it just safe. Make it a safe car. Because one thing that I like about Toyota, even though they make a lot of bland cars, especially in the new ones. I mean, some of the new ones are pretty good looking, but lately, some of them aren't the best looking. 
They are all about making it reliable. They put more money into making the car reliable, making it last as long as get, until 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 your kids are driving it. That's how long they they want it to last. I don't really care if what what well they do care what it looks like, but that's not their main focus. Their main focus is making it reliable. So Nissan, if you can do that, you're gonna sell someone like crazy. Now I do wish Toyota wouldn't make more better looking cars, especially with the Corolla. Because take my I have a Chia Centan Toyota Corolla S and I absolutely love that car. I love the way it looked. It's so beautiful. It's not too overstyled or anything. It's just they got it perfectly right. It was reliable, good. It's not really fast, but that's not the point. It's supposed to be just a fun car to drive around at for City Driving. That's what I like about it. So I just I wish Toyota would do that with with the Corolla. Yes, the new. Yes, they claim they fixed it. They haven't. I've driven the hatchback, which shares the same platform of it. It's okay, but it's not what it's what I think of. That's not what I'm looking for as being a Toyota enthusiast. So really, I just wish Toyota would get better at that. All right, next up. Now we're going to talk about brands as company as a whole, as the cars. Cool thing Ford and Jim Rose to do because of this cool. COVID-19, they are producing masks, which you would think, why are they doing that? Well, if you think about it back in history, Henry Ford, which, which invented the assembly line, is the reason why everything was so easy to get so many cars and everything World War II. So, I thought, I just think it's amazing, the same company, who's based on this, I, I want to say the same beliefs, is now mass reducing stuff for this war, this chemical warfare we're in right now. So I just, I just, I'm just so glad they're doing it. And also, she has GMO is doing this as well. It's just, I just, this is what you get when you get people together. And I can't thank them enough for doing this. I love the two brands, even though they do stuff that I'm not too happy with. But. Still, in the end, they're good. They're good people. They know they want to help. They want to help this crisis get over and get into better days. Because I know they're hurting right now. Nobody wants to buy a car because they want to stay inside and and save the money to to buy groceries and stuff. So really, they're trying to get get over this crisis as quickly as possible, so that more people can buy their cars. And that's the same with every other company. So I'm glad they're stepping in. Like, hey, let's we have there's something we can do. Let's do it. So I'm really proud of them. All right. That's it for car tech money portion. Now we're going to go into talking about new camera. I made a video talking about it a few days ago, but I did decided not to post it because it was really, really short. And I just, just figured why not put it in my car tech Monday. So if you guys haven't know, I got a new camera not too long ago. And let's go. I'm going to move over to previous me. So I'm going to have different clothes on. And we're going to talk about them. So see ya. This is not car tech money. It's a different video. If you saw the last car tech money that went up, Wednesday, you I told you guys I was getting a new camera and I would make a video showing it out. So here it is. Let's show it off. It's not coming in this bag. I bought this Amazon Basics bag so I can keep all my stuff in on the lenses and stuff. So about 30. Let's just get, get her out. Oh, oh boy. This is a Nikon D3 100. Or D3100. It's a DSLR camera. Now, though, a lot of people may, who watch this may know what this is and now and claim that's no camera. It is. This is an, a six year old camera. Now, you, I know I said I got a new camera, but I decided not to get a new one, a, a brand new one, mainly because I don't need it. And. I don't need and it was expensive and I'm trying to save money due to this whole crisis. So I just got it. So I just bought I just bought my mom's old used one that's that she's used for years and kept good condition. Because if you look, it's in pretty good condition. And I'm and she took the new one I ordered and I'll do it's all good. So I paid $115 for this and everything that came with it. So it's pretty nice. It's really cool, a really good deal versus Almost over six hundred dollars to get a camera that was kind of entry level, and this does way more than the, than the other camera. So it's like it's a better deal. So 
I'm gonna pull your this, your camera on and I'm gonna show you cool things about it. I have been playing with it a tiny bit, not too much because well, this a I'm still getting used to it and I'm doing other things. But it's really really cool. I it has this little dial function that has like a bajillion modes on this and it's 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 just incredible. So without further ado, let's pop it on to turn it on. You put pull the switch. Sorry guys, I didn't have the lens on. I thought I was messing with it yesterday trying to figure out how to get it on and off and accidentally took it off without realizing it. So I put it back on and it's all good now. So those who, who like I said in the car tech money, this is a DSLR camera. What does that mean? This this unlike all the other cameras out there, you can remove the lens and put a different lens on. Now if you don't know what a lens is Pretty much, it's, well, obviously this thing right here, but also, you the little camera thing you see on your phone. Like, for example, these three things right here on my phone are, are, diff are all lenses, each one with a different specific purpose. So, what's cool about a DSLR is you can take this one off and put a different lens on it. You're not stuck with whatever lens is on that comes on it. So, that's really cool. And it's a little, it's a, it's a little finicky to get it on and off, but it's, once you learn, it's real cool. So this specific lens that it came with, which, back six years ago, is a Nikon DX, or Nik they call it Nikkor, zero lenses, DX AF-S Nikkor, 18 to 55 millimeters. What does that mean? That all that mumbo jimbo, this has a range. Eight, the millimeters, that's your zoom range. This can zoom up to 18 millimeters to 55 millimeters, which is a really good range for just starting now. Now, if you wanted to use a get a different, a more close up, or get do very long distance, you have to get a little different lens. But for for now, this is a good lens for just about almost. It's a good little bit of everything. Nalcon specifically gives you these lenses for a bunch of a bunch of different stuff. That way you can get use when you can get used to the camera and not have to worry about too many functions and what lens you want to use, yada yada. It's just it's a good get get you out, get in the ballpark and, and get you where you need to go. Now, VR. I thought I thought for a second that meant virtual reality until my mom explained what that meant. This is not virtual that, 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 that this is not a virtual reality thing. They didn't have that back then and I still and they still don't. Well, this, well, DSLR, there's a different kind of camera that does virtual reality. This is, this stands for Vibration Reduction VR, which I know now because of the whole term is confuses people. But pretty much what this does is when you're trying to take a picture and you're nervous or, you know, or you're just all shaky because of the wind or it's just something that's causing the, for the vibration, this will do its best to reduce that vibrations example when you're doing a slow shutter speed that way it doesn't that, that way it doesn't look as blurry because trust me when you're trying to take a picture of a car going really 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 fast like 300 miles an hour and you want to and you're trying to make the right feel for truck you're going to shake a little bit because the car whipping past you and when that and when and you're just going to feel the air and all that vibration so this thing helps reduce that which is really really cool and you also have automatic and manual mode for this specific month, and then you can turn off the vibration reduction. I will leave this thing on just for purposes, just for, just for purposes, really nice. And then, so the camera itself has a lot of different functions. Yes, I know it's screaming at me and I don't have a memory card. So this little dial right here is different modes. You have a nighttime, you have plant, Fast motion, portrait, landscape, and auto. And then you have these modes, which have which are different stuff. This they have M stands for manual. And I'm not sure the auto is. This is like semi-auto. Pretty much as you can so you it lets you sort of manually do adjustments like the like like shutter speed, ISO, and much other thing, but still controls mostly everything. Which is really nice. That way, if you don't want to go full manual, and then you have, you then you have a little setting, and then you have full on manual, which the camera does not. This kicks everything off. All the charms are disabled, and it's all on you. It's all on you to get it right. 
So it's it's really cool. It's really useful. And this is also a video camera, which I'm not gonna use for a video for video purposes, but it can also do that. It's main it can do pretty much anything. That's what this button is there, the little red button. Really cool. Yeah, flash. It's just it's just a really cool camera. I'm still learning about it, but it's there's a whole lot it can do, and I'm very glad I got this over the other other one. So I really like the camera. It is amazing for this what this camera can do. I'm gonna turn it off for waste battery. It's very very incredible. It is very, and I'm excited to use it. I'm, unlike my car reviews, I I can still go outside and take pictures of something. There's I've got I got a backyard. I got a neighborhood full of stuff. So. I guess I have to practice my camera with, but hopefully when this crisis gets over, I can go out there and shoot more with it, like go to like a waterfall or something, because my mom took some really good, like I said, this was my mom, and she was, took some really cool photos with it, so I'm excited to see what it does. So, that's all right, boy, guys, that's it for this, this this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash it, double punch it, and be sure to smash that like button. Most people think, oh, that doesn't do anything. It actually really does for algorithms, so if you really want me to really like me, you want me to do more, be sure to hit the like button, because it helps out with algorithm, and more people get to see it. And then, I'll get more, and then I'll more, get more people, get eventually get paid, and so on and so forth, and more stuff will come. So, if you hit that like button, it can really help me out. Especially, I'm doing nothing, so I'm going to be posting lots of videos for you guys. And be sure to smash the notification bell. If you know what that is, you go over to the big red button that says subscribe. If you are subscribed, you'll have a check mark that says that you are subscribed, so please don't un unclick it. Always go unsubscribe. It's it's weird system. And you there's a little bell. You smack it with a hammer. I'm just kidding. You don't do it. You just, you just click it. That would be cool, though. That would be cool. YouTube. Damn me. So just smash it. So be sure to click the bell and be sure it will give you an option of none, personalized, or all. Personalized means it just gives you notifications every now and then. So mainly, I'm not sure how it works for my channel. So really, just sip it to all that way you get everything, just in case. Because I do lots of these videos and sometimes if you if you do personalize, it may, you may miss something really important. So, and that's it for this video. Like I said, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!